Man, yesterday was a very disappointing day. First, the Ravens, they get dog walked, demolished, beat down by the Bengals. Uh, and then my wife, she made some chicken rice soup. And every time she makes it, I don't know why I never eat any. Uh, but I decided to have some yesterday and it was bubbling in the pots. And I was like, is it ready? She's like, yeah, it's ready. So I take a spoon and I go, ah, and I burnt the roof of my mouth. I burnt my tongue and I burnt my lip as well. That didn't feel good at all. And then um, there's this restaurant that I've been wait waiting to try. It's a new restaurant. And I'm like, man, I'm, I'm so excited to go there, man. It looks nice. I'm like, oh, let's go. So we went and it didn't even end up being all that. And then to finish it off, we come home and we watch Doom. And it's like, what? What was that? Anyway, YouTube team, keep it clean. What's going on? It's Engraven here with another video. And in this video, I'm here to share my post-game thoughts on the game <laughs> that we all watched. I know some of y'all probably turned it off after a while. And I know any of y'all that were there, some of y'all probably left after a while. Um, and that was the Ravens and the Bengals game, and it was, it was rough. It started off like, okay, okay, cool, but then it got ugly fast. Now, starting on defense, because defense, oof, it was a uh, big yikes for them in the uh, in parts of the first half, but certainly in the second half. Second half, it just it got a lot worse. Um, now, remember though, like let's not how quick we forget. That the defense, they were stopping the Bengals. The Bengals were they were moving, but they had to settle for the field goal. Um, they went for it on, I think, the fourth down. But they the the the, the Ravens defense was holding the Bengals early on. They were. It, if y'all don't remember, I mean it don't seem like it. When you look at the score, and you look at the way the game went. But early on, the Ravens defense was holding. But Ravens offense, they started off slow. And I think that's a big part of the defense sometimes because there have been other games where the same thing happens. Ravens defense, they'll hold the opponent in early on in the game, but the offense will start off so slow. They'll start off slow, and then the defense is like, they right back out there again, and they right back out there again, and they right back out there again. So that doesn't do anything for their confidence, and it doesn't do anything good for their stamina either. So just something to keep in mind. But... And after a while, the defense was just like, you know what? We out. And my guy, Marlon Humphrey. Love Marlon Humphrey. But yesterday, again, it was his worst day of his career. And, hey, we, we allowed to have bad days or whatever it is that we do. So, again, I don't want anybody to start getting, oh, man, he sucks. He's this. He's that. He's terrible. Blah, blah, blah. He had a terrible day. He's not a terrible player, though. Just something to keep in mind. Uh, but yesterday, uh, he needed to... Um, just say a repeat of Adrian Broner because he, I know he was like, man, I'm getting cooked. Because he was. He, he was. He was literally getting cooked from start to finish. And we all thought, and, and not even that we all thought, because Bengals, they said they were going to do it. And early on, they started doing it. They were attacking Anthony Avery. And like It was like every passing play, go on a 23, go to 23, throw to 23 side. Throw to him all day. But then they were like, hold up. 44? Forget 23. We ain't worried about 23 no more. Let's go at 44. Let's expose 44 today. They went at, they weren't scared to go at him. They went at him and they were extremely successful. Extremely successful. It's funny because I feel like so many Ravens fans, like, we're all coaches. Because I heard so many people say the exact same thing this game. The exact, excuse me, the exact same strategy for Jamar Chase. They said, put Marlon Humphrey on Jamar Chase. That's what I saw so many Ravens fans saying. Put, put Marlon Humphrey on Jamar Chase and let the rest of the cornerback sort it out. And wouldn't that be wise to put your best corner on the team's best receiver who has been just going off against every team so far? Yeah, it would be a smart strategy. So you can sort of try to take him out the game, or even if you don't take him out, limit him in the game, and then make the other guys beat you. Now, the other guys, they'll beat us too, but not like Jamal Chase, but that strategy clearly didn't work. And that was Raven's strategy too. So the fans, we, we be honest sometimes. Well, y'all be honest sometimes. So anyway, no, because I'm, I'm usually never on it. But anyway, 
Marlon Humphrey had a rough day yesterday. Uh, and the defense just as a whole. Uh, remember those games. Because it happened in two games. When Marlon Humphrey told Patrick Queen, wrap up, wrap up. Patrick Queen, should have he should have told Marlon, hey, you keep that same energy and you wrap up. You wrap up. He should have done that. Uh, <laughs> something that's funny. Or not even funny. It's actually kind of sad. I don't even know why I said funny. Probably because I was laughing. But anyway, something that's very interesting um, to think of the, with this Ravens team. It seems that, uh, well, definitely on defense. I, I can't say the whole team. But if it's lacking in one area, then it may be lacking in other places too. Um, it seems to be a lack of leadership. And that's weird. That's weird to say for a Ravens team, right? Because you always like you got John Harbaugh, you got Lamar Jackson, whatnot. It's like, oh, what are we? Calais Campbell. It's like we got leaders, right? And we do. But in yesterday's game, it, it showed that there was a lack of leadership because the Ravens defense they had been getting dog walked, they had been getting abused, they had been getting beat up on, and they were down by ten. Joe Burrow lobs it up in the back of the end zone. Marlon Humphrey makes an interception. Nice play, Marlon Humphrey. Great job. But then he starts flexing, and then the whole defense goes over there to go take a picture, and they're posing. And I'm like, I'm almost like irate because I'm like, why, why are they celebrating like they're up right now? If this was a close game and the Ravens were up, I understand. If this was a blowout game and the Ravens were up, I understand. But this is a game where your defense has been getting just abused. And you're you're down by 10. It'd be one thing if your defense had been getting abused and it was a tie game. Like I said, it's either a tie game or a super close game. And you went over and did, but your defense has been getting dog walked all, well, not all game, but for the majority of the game. And you're down by 10 points. And you go over and y'all all taking a picture together like y'all been doing something? I couldn't believe that. I, I thought that that just showed a lack of maturity and a lack of leadership. Because why, why did not nobody say, hey, no, 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 no. We, no, let's not do this. <clears throat> let's not do this. Why, why didn't anybody say Why didn't anybody stop that? Because, yeah, again, it was a, a nice play at a nice moment. And we were hoping that the offense could do something from it. But you, you're down. You're down. You're getting beat up and you're down and you're smiling and celebrating. And again, y'all know I'm, I'm not one to take the fun out of the game, but this is not about fun in the game. This is about <laughs> situational fun. Like, you got to know what's going on. And that, to me, showed just a, a big lack of leadership. That was just no good at all, man. Um, and now, like, now that you think about it, this is for Marlon Humphrey. This has not been his best season overall. Um, he's had some good games, but he has some bad games, too. But um, he's definitely misses Marcus Peters a lot, for sure. Definitely misses Marcus Peters. Um, <clears throat> the Ravens' defense, they, they miss Marcus Peters just as a whole. Uh, I saw a comment. I forgot who it was from. But they, I loved how they put it because they said with Wink, with Wink, that he needs to blitz responsibly. And I, I love that. That's like the perfect word for it. He needs to blitz responsibly. And they followed that up by saying he got to realize that we don't have Marcus Peters. So, and then I saw um, Wola, if y'all familiar with him on Twitter. I think his Twitter handle is Wola Writer, but he made a thread about it too. With how, with Wink, they, he thinks that he needs to simplify the defense a bit because you don't have what you once had back there in the secondary. Um, and he said that with guys, he said, you, and, and I know, I remember a drive where we called it out too, that you, I just said that they were looking so confused. The defense was looking so confused, like, oh, what do we do? What do we do? They all talking to each other right before the play's about to start. And then four guys go and cover, uh, Tyler Boyd. Four. Four, one, two, th four guys. Tyler Boyd runs to the, to the right, to the flats. Four guys follow him. Four defenders. Now, we know Tyler Boyd is nice. Especially as Ravens fans, we know that. But for, to put four people on him? So, yeah, that was um very, very uh, <laughs> crazy. But what he was saying in his thread, he was saying that with the defense, sometimes it may be so complicated that guys may be overthinking. And then when they overthink, that leads to poor execution with the poor tackling. 
because guys are already so confused on their assignments and what they need to do that they forget about the fundamentals. And I don't think there's an excuse to forget about the fundamentals because that's where everything starts with anything. With anything that you're doing, no matter what it is, you, you need a root. You need a foundation. And that foundation starts with fundamentals and whatever it is. So that's the basics. So you, you can't go to the intermediate stuff and to the advanced stuff without doing the basic stuff first. And this team has been struggling. Struggling literally almost all season long with tackling. And the only games where they didn't struggle with tackling were in the Broncos game. where They struggled with tackling on one drive in that game. But the Broncos game and the Chargers game. And it's funny that we say that because those are the only two games where they were blowouts, where the Ravens won convincingly. So that would mean that they sort of took away a reason to be bad tacklers because teams, they, they weren't running on them like that. They were not running on them like that. And it's funny because on the drive in the Broncos game where the Ravens did that poor tackling, it was when the Broncos were running the ball. But, I mean, Ravens in this game, they show poor tackling against the run, and they show poor tackling against the pass, too. So they, they, they did a nice little blend of both. But that's been a problem for the majority of the season. So, and it's, it's, it's one of those scary problems for me because it's like, like, I mean, guys know how to tackle, but we just haven't been tackling. Now, again, Ravens are 5-2. and two. So it's not like, oh, man, the season's over. It's a wrap. It's done. Oh, it we're finished. No, they're 5-2. They're and two. And they're going into the bye week. So this will give the guys a chance to rest, relax, come back to Florida for a little bit, come vibe down here, and just take a breather. Take a breather because it is a long season. It is a very grueling season. This is a very tough job. It's a tough job physically. It's a tough job mentally. It's not for everybody. Um, but these guys, these guys have made it out of the 1% in the world to be be in the NFL. So they need breaks. We all need breaks from whatever it is that we do. Um, and this break, I know <laughs> there were some people that said, um, I, I saw somebody yesterday say, oh, man, maybe the Ravens, they were just, uh, they were just so focused on the bye week. It, 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 it's, like, um, it's like when you got to come into work on, on a Friday before you're about to be off for the weekend. And they say, you just, you're just going there to just get it over with. And I was like, mm. I mean, hey, who knows? But, mm, but they'll be okay, man. They'll be okay. Uh, the pass rush. Early on, they were getting pressure on Joe Burrow. He was still making good decisions. Uh, his his footballs, his passes were sailing a little bit. Uh, then I think the pressure just stopped. I think they stopped. Um. And that that since he, that the, that confidence got built up quick. I mean, they were already a confident team coming in. They they were what four and two, they were four and two. And again, the games that they lost, they lost by six points combined. So they already had confidence. But this game, this was a huge confidence booster for them, and it let them know, hey, we can hang with the big boys. We can hang with these Ravens. These dudes been dog walking us for the last three years. Uh, uh, that's done. That's done. Well, for now. So, shout out to them. They came in, did their thing. Joe Burrow, what, three touchdowns? Uh, Azuma, the tight end? For both of them, he, like, it's National Tight Ends Day. He said, Mark Andrews, who? Look, I'm taking this game over at tight end. And he did. Marlon Humphrey, he, he dogged Marlon Humphrey for that one touchdown, his first touchdown. And on that touchdown, he, um, there was actually holding Bengals offensive lineman was holding. He was holding Calais Campbell. But it wasn't cold. And it was crazy because Alejandro Villanueva on Lamar Jackson's 39-yard run toward the end of the game when Ravens were in comeback mode, uh, Alejandro actually did less. He did less than the Bengals offensive lineman did. They No holding. And Bengals, they weren't penalized all game long. All game long. No penalties. Skill or coincidence? Maybe a bit of both. But they weren't penalized all game long. Now, were their lack of penalties the reason the Ravens lost? 
No, it wasn't. Ravens should have actually been penalized for how bad they were tackling. Like, if we're being real about it. Um. Anyway, uh, special teams. Well, actually, defense still. Excuse me. Uh, but with defense, <clears throat> our defensive line, um, they're very, uh, they're a very interesting bunch. Um, but they just, it seems like they don't get that same push. I'm just every time I really try to think about where can I pinpoint what's going on with the defense, it's so tough. It's really tough for me. It's really hard. But obviously, again, fundamentals is everything. That that's where I would start, but. Like, I try to pinpoint it to one position group and whatnot, but it's just, it's, it's really hard. I don't know if that same thing happens with y'all, but it happens with me for sure. Um, Pernell McPhee. Pernell McPhee, uh, I didn't really see him in the game too much, but he certainly made an impact. There was a play where Joey B, he threw it. I think it was an incompletion. But Pernell McPhee... He, I think, was it right before halftime? Was that the one that led, that led to the field goal? I think it was, but I'm not. I don't remember for sure. But Joey B threw the ball. I think it was incomplete. And Pernell McPhee hit him. They call roughing the passer, and I was like, all right, let, let's see the replay to see if this is a legitimate roughing the passer. And it was. It, it was a no excuse roughing the passer. It was a why did you do that roughing the passer? It was like, come on, Pernell McPhee roughing the passer. You're a veteran, man. You're a veteran. You're supposed to be the guy. And, I mean, he gave that speech last week about, hey, they trying to come into our house and take what's ours. Well, should have gave that same speech against the Bengals because they came into your house and took what was yours. And then with that penalty, you gave it to them. But, yeah, yeah, it was just a, it was a bad play on his part, man. Bad play. Because, again, it wasn't even close. It wasn't even like, oh, man, that's ticky-tack. No, it was way after Joey Burrow threw it. Threw it. So, anyway, um, defense is just... They gotta get themselves together, man. They gotta get themselves together, and that's a um, that like that's a. I mean, it, it could happen to any player, but that's like a a young player move, like not a not a veteran, especially a veteran. Like you've been around the game for a little minute, man. Like you you know this stuff, man. Um, and I know you want to inflict pe- inflict fear and pain in the opposing team, but you gotta be smart about it. Um, <clears throat> yeah, man, I. I guess that's that's it for defense. Cause, <laughs> oof. Well, what else can we say about them? What else can we say? Um, just that the their hearts were ripped from out of their chest this game by the Bengals. Literally ripped from out of their chest, and, and we saw it, especially toward the end of the game. And I mean, I, I gave them a I gave them a little pass because the game was over, and they when they gave up that when they, when they gave up the touchdown run to Joe Mixon, the game wasn't over yet then. But when they gave up that, that pretty much ended the game though. But when they uh then they gave up the touchdown run to number thirty four. And I was like, oh boy, yeah, these dudes. It's like, you know what's coming. And it was one thing that was crazy that I didn't understand, and maybe it's just something about football that I'm missing or don't know about. Or I'm I'm naive to. But I didn't understand how when the Bengals were up, they were up big. And they were running the ball. So I'm like, okay, we know they're running the ball because they're just trying to run out the clock. Ravens knew they were running the ball because they're just trying to run out the clock. The Ravens, I saw that defensive line, and some linebackers, like, over-pursuing the, the running back. And I didn't understand, like, how that was possible. And, again, like I said, maybe it's something that I, I'm naive to that I don't know. Um, but I just I didn't understand because I felt like they would, wherever the running back went, they would go there. They would try to fill that hole and whatnot and stop him in whatever gap he ran through. So, but, anyway, like I said, that, that's just me. Um, special teams. Uh, Sam Cook, he he was involved a little too much this game. We saw a little too much of him. Now with Justin Tucker, um, with Justin Tucker, I did not uh, realize how long the field goal attempts were uh, that they didn't call him out there for. I didn't realize that they were fifty-seven and fifty-eight yard field goals. I did not realize that. I thought they were a little shorter than that because there there seemed to be some a lot of confusion confusion uh, with coaching to, in, in that game. Coaching in, in the game yesterday overall, <clears throat> it was it was weird. It was very weird. Um, Joe Burrow, just like Patrick Mahomes, uh, at least Patrick Mahomes when we face him, uh, against the Blitz, he's pretty good. He's pretty good. Um, so uh, 
but Wink kept blitzing. Uh, and again, it's not bad when it's working, obviously. Nobody complains when it's working. But if it's not working, we just want it. All right, cut back on it a little bit. Especially because your, your corners are getting dogged. Well, Marlon Humphrey for sure. But your secondary is getting beat. So let's, let's dial it back a little bit. Maybe we need some more people covering these receivers and tight ends. Middle of the field, wide open. Middle of the field is getting exposed. Uh, Azuma, he, he's wide open all day. Well, on his touchdowns, he was. Uh, and then he said, Marlon Humphrey, do you, you think he's about to tackle me? Mm, no. Uh, you're good. Bye. But, so maybe they, he should have dialed it back a bit. John Harbaugh, um, I just, with the, the play where the Ravens, it looked like they were going to go for it on like 4th and 10, I think that's what it was. Or was it 4th and 15? I forgot what it was. But the offense, they came out on the field. They stayed on the field, I mean. And the play clock is getting down. And Lamar calls timeout. And I'm, I'm not sure if there was a timeout call from the sideline, too. But I'm like, what? why are they calling timeout here? It just, it was so confusing. And then we were thinking, oh, okay. Well, I guess they called timeout because they're getting ready to go for the field goal. And they didn't want to lose no yards. Okay, makes sense. But... Then Sam Cook came out. So they punted. And I was like, what huh? What was that about? Um, so it was just very weird, strange, confusing. I just didn't get it. Offense. Like we said earlier, offense, they do no de they do no favors to the defense when they come out and they start slow. It again, because defense wasn't bad all game. They were bad for a lot of it. And we obviously remember there was a lot more bad than good. But they weren't bad all game. Beginning of the game, they were doing it. But offense just had another one of those slow starts. And Ravens got to get over that. That is one thing. They got to get over these slow starts. Now, <clears throat> all game long, Trey Hendrickson, he dogged, he dogged Alejandro yesterday. He straight dogged him. Hubbard, they, uh, Ogan Joby, um, who else is on that defensive line? Reader, they dogged Ravens' offensive line all game long. All game long. And Lamar, too, <clears throat> I think it just got to the point where he started pressing a little bit, and he ran into two sacks, one by Ogan Joby and one by Hubbard. It's crazy. I could say, oh, I should have said one of the ones by Hubbard. I believe he had like two, but Lamar ran into uh he ran into two of the five sacks that the Ravens offensive line gave up. Um, so those two were on him. Um, but they 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 straight dog right? Like even for when he wasn't getting sacked, Bengals defensive line they were all over this guy all day, all day. And then. On top of that, the defensive line was all over them already. Then on top of that, when they were blitz like Von Bell or something, untouched. 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 If your quarterback ain't got no time, what you expect? This is why Lamar, when Ravens start like coming back, especially like right before, uh, I think right before halftime, and, uh, he just was like, you know what? I just do it myself. I'm going to just do it myself. That's why he, j he just started running. I think the, the, the statistics show that yesterday the Ravens that combined. Their running backs had zero yards. <clears throat> one touchdown with Devontae Freeman. All, all together they had zero yards. One touchdown. And Lamar had like 68 rushing yards. That's, that's, that's not going to do it. I know a lot of them, but I've seen a, a lot of people saying, oh, it's time Le'Veon Bell need to get up out of here. Ravens need to cut him. We'll talk about the running back situation uh, more in, de in detail later on. But um, it just, with Le'Veon Bell, this, this, was not, this was not his game today. Uh, it wasn't. Ravens, they, they did not even necessarily force feed him, um, but they were, they, they were trying to make it work with Le'Veon Bell today. I mean, in yesterday's game. They were trying, but Bingo said no. Um, it just wasn't working itself out. Then there was a play. I think did they run a re the uh, the triple op the option play with uh, Le'Veon Bell. They ran some play with Le'Veon Bell to where um, <clears throat> I was just scared because it looked like when he got the ball, it looked like everything slowed down. Um, and I was just scared, like, oh man, we about to lose big yards. Now there was one play where they pitched it, they tossed it to him, and he lost he lost a good amount of yards. But 
There was another play I'm thinking of. I think it was an option play, but I don't remember for sure. But he just it just looked so slow. And I was like, ooh. Uh, Freeman, uh, he, there was one play where he bounced it to the outside and he started getting a little hesitant, just a little bit, and he ended up losing yards. Tyson Williams, he had two carries for, I want to say, 10 yards. He had two carries. Most explosive runner. And, again, I, um, I think that he's going to be traded. I do. I think Tyson is going to be traded. We'll see what happens for sure, but... Who knows, man? Because who who knows? That's it, man. I know some people think that Devontae Freeman, he gonna be traded. But I don't know, man. I I just I you could tell every game they don't value Tyson. They don't value what he does, they don't value what he brings. They don't value him. And um it's it's like it's crazy. It's it's crazy. And uh your run game it was clearly suffering. Like, you needed a run game yesterday. You needed it. Uh, but, nope. They wasn't. They, they didn't do it. They, they, well, shout out to Bengals defense, too, now. But Ravens, um, the run game couldn't get it done. And that's what's been the case for the majority of the season. Run game hasn't been anything special this year. I mean, look, Lamar, he's been getting a nice, nice little chunk of yards. But that's your quarterback. And I'm not against Lamar running at all. But it just needs to come from some other avenues, too. Now, the offensive line, like I said, they were getting dogged by the Bengals' defensive line like all day. Um, they they weren't helping uh, too much. Uh, and it, then it hurt, especially when Patrick McCarry went out. We'll find out what, what the status of him is. Um, <clears throat> it's just rough, man. Offensive line has, uh, they going through it. Of course, Ronnie Stanley, he only played one game. Uh, now Patrick McCarry is out. I don't think it'll be for too long, but we'll see. Uh, ben Cleveland, he's out. Um, Bradley Bozeman, they said he was playing with a bad back yesterday. And I feel like, hey, if uh, if you are you at 80% better than like a Tristan Colon Castillo at 100%? Because I feel like if um, if a player is, if, if he got a bad back, <laughs> like are you helping the team more or are you hurting them? Which Which one is it? And they, that's when it's up to coaches and what, because you know the players gonna want to play, but that's when it's up to coaches to be like, all right, hey, you either helping us or you hurting us, and they got to figure that out. But offensive line yesterday, uh, just it, it wasn't good. Um, Lamar, like I said, he's getting hit all 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 game. Um, he was uh, uh, he was getting hit all game. He was getting uh. Just popped all game. He was getting pressured all game. And, yeah, you saw football sailing. Uh, you saw incompletions. Um, you, it's just rough, man. You saw this dude, like, running for his life. And, and then he, uh, like I said, he just kept pressing. He started pressing because he's like, man, wait, where's my help? Where's my help? So, and even though. Even though the offensive line, they had been getting dogged from the jump, um, the game was still close. It was still close. And then, because uh, they got the touchdown, like, right before halftime with Devontae Freeman, where they moved the ball down the field. Um, and then, uh, but then the Bengals, they end up getting the score. But the Ravens, after halftime, Lamar was like, well, no, we throwing this ball. Hit Hollywood for the deep ball, the touchdown. I was like, oh, let's go. Um, and then that was it. That was it. That was a wrap. Bengals were like, nope, no more. Not at all. Now, I know I heard some people saying, well, why weren't we using the read option more? Sort of slow down that pass rush, slow down that defensive line. Um, and that's on culture. That's, that's definitely on culture. But with Greg Roman in this game, um, I didn't have a problem with the majority of the play calling. Uh, I did think it was kind of weird that you decided to run a screen on, like, third and long, third and very long. That's when you decide you want to pull out a screen in Hollywood. Um, still wondering why they don't use running back screens, but mm, that's I guess that it is what it is. Um, but I, uh, I, I was wondering why they did that screenplay on third and 15. Then they actually ran, I think it was a screen to Mark Andrews, too, on another third and long. 
But it was like it was like oh, but they, I think they called holding on that on that play. But Mark Andrews he had got a lot of yards, and the Ravens probably would have went for it on fourth down. But then they called holding, so that brought it back. I think yeah, that um that was frustrating because I, I I don't remember who they said the holding was on, and I do not even remember what it even looked like um to see if it was legitimate or not. Um, but Hollywood he looked good. Rashad Bateman he looked good. Uh, and literally every single one of his catches that he's got this season has went for a first down. Every single one. And that's crazy. Every single one has went for a first down. Um, don't know what that says. If that's him, if that's coincidence, if that's his play design. But it's a good thing. So again, Rashad Bateman has filled in well. And he has looked the part. He looks the part. And it's crazy that as... As Ravens fans, we 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 see this happening. Like we got to take a step back and really think about it. Like we had two first round pick receivers playing side by side, and they were doing their thing. Because, like I said, with Hollywood this year, the Ravens have used him like they use him in the playoffs. They and they, they I wish they would have done that before. But they use him now like, they sh they, like they've like they been using him in the playoffs. And he's been showing like, hey, that works. Because he's been open all year. All year. Um, Proche, Duvernay, Boykin, uh, Wallace. Didn't see the other receivers really involved. Um, Mark Andrews. He It looked like he was going to have like a, 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 like have a good game. The way the first half started. But second half, Bengals were like, nope. Not you. It ain't going to be you. Uh, so they, they completely removed him out the game. Like, completely. <laughs> they took him all the way out. Um, Yeah, that was that, man. Uh, you could you could see, like, Lamar was like, if, if ain't nobody else going to help me, I'm going to just do it myself. I'm going to do it myself. But then you could tell he was pressing because there was that one play where it was third and one. Where Ravens were in comeback mode. He ran a play action, sent Hollywood deep. And Hollywood had two people on him. Lamar still threw it to him. Still threw it to him. I thought that was a bad decision. Um, and I felt like they should have just went for that first. Uh, just say so they could have a new set of downs. So you ain't even got to deal with fourth and one. But they didn't get it. It was a bad decision. Um, but they went for it on the fourth down. Uh, and they did an option play. But Lamar, he kept it. He ain't, he ain't toss it back to the running back. But he kept it himself and ran for the first down. And. Um, I forgot what happened on that drive. I think that's the drive where that 39 yard run that he got got called back, I believe. And and that was just when that happened, it was like, oh boy, because that because Ravens still had a chance at that point. But when they took away that 39 yard run because of that little whack holding call, it was like, oh okay, all right. So what a game. Anyway, like Ravens are five and two. Uh, they are not in a bad position in the AFC. They're second in the AFC North. I mean, it's still early, though. Again, when they were first in the AFC North, it was still early. Now they're second in the AFC North. Um, they could have took a 6-1 uh, versus 4-3. and three, um, But, no, they said, no, no, we ain't giving y'all that. And I know people have been like, oh, man, well, remember back in the Super Bowl year, they were 5-1, and one, and then they played the Texans. The Texans blew them out right before the bye week. And I think that was, oh, yeah, that was Terrell Suggs' first game back. <laughs> he did not look good. Uh, but the whole Ravens team, they didn't look good either. Um, so, I mean, hopefully the, the, the seasons end the same like they did that year. Uh, but we'll see. We'll see. Ravens have a, uh, they got a lot of work to do, a lot of improvements to make. Um, obviously, the trade deadline, by the time the Ravens play their next game against the Vikings, um, the trade deadline will have passed, so we'll see if they make any moves. Um, it's going to be tough, and, like, what what would you trade for? What would you trade for a running back? Would you trade for an offensive lineman? Or would you trade for a cornerback, linebacker, safety, D-line? What, what would you trade for? Um, so we'll see if anything happens. Um, if they make any moves, uh, if they make any changes, uh, we'll see. But, again, this bye week is coming at a good time. Uh, gives the Ravens some time to just <sighs> take that breather because they certainly need that breather. Um, but, yeah, that's that. Anyway, team, keep it clean.
appreciate y'all. I love y'all. I thank you all for watching. Um, shout out to all the Team Keep It Clean patrons, the new patrons, the old patrons that have been doing it for a minute. I appreciate y'all. Um, and just thank you for everybody supporting on the channel. Thank you for uh, 47,000 subscribers. Um, let's keep this thing moving. Uh, got the bye week up, but the the, the, the videos, they're not going to stop. We, we don't have a bye week. <laughs> so anyway, Team Keep It Clean, I love y'all. I, I appreciate y'all. And I'll see you soon, just like the Ravens were. Uh, after that touchdown to Hollywood in the second half, I'm out.